Welcome to our 2022 Tracer 200 BH SLE. Starting right in your back bumper here. If you just reach in, pull that cap out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here to help you hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. We're just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit and keep things that bit fresher. And then the cap here just kind of presses into place. In this corner, as well as each corner of the trailer, you're going to find these stabilizer jacks. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now, just to keep things firm while you're out camping. A step forward, and you have a propane quick connect line. So basically, you're just taking your quick connect line, attach it into there, get that collar pushed back, it'll pop forward and lock it into place. Then you get the valve in the bottom there, you open that up, allows the flow of propane. Right? With that valve open, you cannot undo that quick collar, so just kind of an added safety. And then, of course, just a little dust cap here. Another step forward, we'll get your sewer system. So it's right down back here. You're just going to grab that cap, turn it, pull it out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet, so it's, of course, going to be your dirtiest water. So we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water. We'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Up from there, we find your short cord inlet. Little notch in the bottom corner there. Lines up with this notch here. Press them in together, little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back to properly lock it into place. Then as you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Right up beside that, we've got your exterior shower. So we've got a key just like this guy here. You can stick it on into there, open her up. Get the standard three foot hose, hot and cold water, of course. Simple as that. Once you're done, just tucking it around the handles and lock it back down. Right up above that is your city water inlet. You pop that cap out of there and your water hose will plug into that. Turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Step forward and get the exhaust for your furnace here. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Towards the front is your fresh water inlet. So that cap comes out of there, your water hose sticks into that. Turn on the water and it fills up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. Drains for it right underneath here. It's the one up front. So as you open that up, sorry, it's the one in the back. As you open that up, it allows a fresh tank to drain itself out. Secondary vent right there. So you will see water coming out of that as well. These two lines here are low point drains. You basically open those up and they allow the water system to drain itself out. So if you leave in the unit for a while or getting ready to winterize it, you just drain all that water out before you're doing so. Cable inlet right there, coax cable plugs in, fires up your TV location. Fury and solar panel plug ins right down below it. Fury and solar panel plugs into there, charges your batteries. One under your storage compartment here. So inside of here, you'll see that the customers opted to go with the weight distribution hitch. So we've just got that stored in here for them, as well as your water hose. Inside of that water hose is that park adapter. It's your 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Around front of the unit, a little service light here. And this little black box there is your battery box. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back, or you seven pinch your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. Loosen off those knobs, you can open up this flap. Pull this right off and show you propane tanks here. So you got this changeover in the back. Should currently be red. Nope, it's currently green. So it's just letting us know we've got propane in the system right now. If it were to go red, well, you got a tank open. It's just letting you know that tank's now empty. At that point, just close it off. Flip your changeover to whichever tank you're running off of and open that one up. Standard tongue jack in up front, one way's up, other way's down. Other end of your storage compartment here. Inside of here, you'll find these surge guards that the customers opted to go with. Also right up on the wall is a motion sensing light. So not really the best view of it, but you can kind of see that switch underneath has a one and a two on it. A two is dual function. Dual function means it's gonna use that motion sensor. One is gonna be single function. So just on is on. We'll be able to get a better look at those lights kind of throughout the unit once we get inside. Little leash latch there, bottle opener. The two exterior speakers, GFI protected outlets, little storage compartment back here. And then in the back of the end, you got your hot water tank. So this keyway here, you just line that up and you can pop it on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before turning it on with either source though, you want to hit this relief valve there. If the tank is full, you're going to get some water coming out. If you're not getting any water out, there's a chance that it's empty. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up, just so you're not running the risk of burning out your elements. Lock it back down once you're done. Then you get your spare tire back here. Straight up from there, you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. And now making our way inside of the unit, your assist handle just stop 90 degrees and it'll fall into place. Then we can open up the door. Door's on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. And we'll point out, if you've got the door wide open, it does contact your awning arm. So if you're running your awning, you just make sure your door's about 90 degrees or so. 
For your steps, you're gonna grab that handle, pull it straight back, flip that last step over, make our way inside. First things first, right on the left there, get your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Straight up the wall from there on the far left there, you get all your interior light switches. In the center there, I believe is your awning light. Nope, it's an accent light across the front of the unit. And then on the right is your awning light. Awning itself is on this switch here. Press and hold out and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're just gonna see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerate the, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. There's our flap and there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water anyways. So what you're gonna do is grab either arm front or rear. You just pull down on it and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you wanna make sure these arms are back up straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending it. Then you can press and hold the tract. We're in, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. Another thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. So right inside your entry door, we've got another one of these motion sensing lights. So you can see that single function or the dual function there. So the dual function is your motion sensing, single is just on. Right beside that's your antenna, so you're just going to press that up, kind of turning it, looking for your best signal wherever you find it, you can leave it there. Before travel though, as this arrow says, you want to make sure that guy's fully rotated, just that it's pointing the right way and the metal fins are pointed backwards, if not forwards. In the bedroom, you get your closet space on each side, as well as of course right across the top. You also get a little reading light on either side here, just on its own center push button. If we pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment there and on either side you do have little power outlets for the emergency exit here you're pulling this tab to get rid of the screen take this handle there throw it outside hop on out the blinds throw out the unit just kind of sit here leave them simple as that right behind the end of the kitchen get your sink here of course big single basin hot and cold water of course you get a little bit of a light up there as well some storage up top you'll find that binder that binder's got all of your owner's manuals any keys any remotes anything like that for the unit you'll find right in there kind of up from there again you get your smoke detector yep. storage underneath your sink as well as your drawer space here underneath that you get your lp detector propane's heavier than air it sits on the floor that guy detects and starts going off just like a smoke detector would it also does your co2 Power converter here, press the top and center and it pops on open. All of your breakers are in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. For the stove, you're just gonna take that bifold cover and flip it on back. Take the knob, turn it over to that little frame. Hit it with the igniter, it just fires right up. Once you're done, just turn it all back off, letting it cool down, then closing the glass cover. For the oven, we're going to open that up, knob on the right there, you're going to press that over the little flame. Again, just hit the igniter a couple of times and you can see that pilot light gets going. Once you get the pilot light going, you just hold the knob in for another couple seconds and you can release. The flame will then hold itself, turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pilot, it'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling or leaving the unit, you want to make sure it's right off. Switch on the right side there, press it up, does your knobs, down does your knobs as well as the oven. Up above that, you get a range vent, so fan as well as a light. Above that again is your microwave, pretty standard, just like home. 12 volt fridge back here, so as long as you're plugged in with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Freezer up top, fridge down below, and down below all that, you get the return air for your furnace, so just kind of making sure that's not blocked off. Your dinette here, you can see is currently set up as the dinette. If you're to take your table here and wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases. Your table will sit onto this ledge and this ledge here. You can take your back cushions, fill in the center, creates a bed. A little light on either end here, as well as some storage on both sides. Sound bar between it, power button right in the center there turns it on. Mode to cycle through all of your inputs. Select to get through all of your settings. You get your seeks and your pause and play on that side there. 
volume controls. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. This is your entertainment area here. So you do have a TV backer there. Antenna outlet, turning that antenna on, just hitting that button there. This will also help clear up your stereo signal. Cable outlet right up above it. AV cables are hooked into the stereo, so you can kind of get surround sound through it, I guess. Not really surround, but you get sound. Um, for your thermostat, press and hold the power button. That'll turn it on. All right, so heat, we'll let the furnace fire up. The furnace is going to be moving its air through all of your little portals that you got throughout the units. Temp selections just with your arrows at any point. Power button's also modes. We hit that after heat, it'll come down into fan. It'll turn off the furnace, it'll turn on the air conditioning fan. You're not getting any air conditioning, it's just moving air around. You can select your low or high fan. Right. The mode again after fan will come down into dry. So it's just gonna run the low fan and the compressor, just trying to get any rid of get rid of any humidity in the units. Mode again after that, it'll come up into cool. Select your temperature, it'll cool down to that temperature. Again, you can just hit fan to select your fan speed. Mode again after that, it'll come down into heat. To turn it off, just press and hold, and that'll turn it all off. A little bit of storage down here. Into the two bunk spaces, you just get their own lights up on the wall here. Same thing down low, USB charger up on the wall there as well. Then you also just get the doghouse storage down below. Into the bathroom, your lights in here are both the dual function lights. You get your medicine cabinets here. Down underneath it's your monitor panel. In the bottom right corner you get your water pump switch. You turn that on, turns on your water pump, drying it up a fresh tank, pressurize your lines. Monitor system, so battery here you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray tanks. Hot water tank controls right here, so the thunderbolt on the left is firing up with electricity. Flame on the right turns it on with the propane. If this red light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point, just off and back on to reset it. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course, right around the corner from there, you get your GFI protected outlet, chest on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Toilet flips on open, you get your flusher front and center. Then in the shower, you get the stainless head and hose, as well as your roof vent here. Just turning that knob to open it up. In the back corner, you get the switch, it turns on your fan. Now I do believe that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.